Okay, today we're going to look at the uh, cartridge fuse. Now we're going to kind of compare this right off the bat. This is a screw-in fuse that I did on the last uh, video. It's a one-time fuse, uh, non-motor load. Uh, standard old thing you'll see in some of the older uh, fuse boxes in older homes. This one here, this is a little different because it's a cartridge fuse. And that's because it looks like a little cartridge. Uh, notice what this says on it. it says bus one time, bus just a brand, one time fuse non 60. That's a 60 amp fuse, but it's not for motor loads. Motor loads are an entirely different uh, breed of cat, so to speak. These have one element in them, and if there's too much power going through this thing, then the element will break. It's a little weak spot, like all these things have a weak spot in them, that's why they're fuses, because they're the uh, part that is supposed to fail before you burn wiring up or burn uh, uh, equipment up. So we're going to take this one apart, we're going to take a look inside and see how it's put together. Okay, here's what uh, this thing looks like when it's tore apart. First thing I'm going to look at is this little container of stuff. Okay, this thing is full of, it's like sand. It's probably silica of some type. Sometimes it's diatomaceous earth. Uh, this stuff doesn't burn. That's why they use it. Because fuses sometimes get very hot, so they want the fuse itself to catch fire. I mean, they are made out of cardboard, and the cardboard is flammable. Uh, so they put that stuff in there as uh, something to stop fires. Okay, the real part of the fuse is here. Okay, now this is uh, real guts of the fuse. What we have here is a small piece of what it looks like is copper. See the small areas there? Those small areas are the weak spots. Now there's three of them on this one. I don't know why they got three, but they do. They got one there, one in the middle, and one there. And possibly, the only thing I can think of uh, why they would have three would be if you had a bad connection on one end, like if you had a bad connection here, then this would heat up and that would make this little uh, weak spot hotter so it would tend to blow. Uh, that's the only the only thing I can come up with. I'm not a fuse manufacturer so I don't know none of the, anything about these things other than the fact that they do blow and there's different ways to make them. So that all that's going to happen is when the Amperage draw gets beyond what the rated load is, and this one was 60. Uh, that little thing's gonna burn in two. Once it burns in two, then it's dead. Got to replace it with a new one. Now, I'm gonna place a couple more fuses beside it. Now, here's one that's uh, the same physical size. Here's one that is uh, smaller. The one on the right, you know, fits in a smaller uh, clamp. <clears throat> and uh, they max out about 30 amps. And I haven't seen any of these larger ones above 60. This one here is a uh, 35. Upside down, of course. Uh, yeah, that's a 35. Uh, and those are slow blows. They're a different type of fuse than this one here. This one is, as I said before, a non-motor fuse. This would be something that could be, uh, it could be for a range, uh, electric range or something like that, that has a fairly steady amp draw. Motors have very high amp draw on startup, and then uh, it slows down or it goes down to a lower amp draw as they run and they need uh, different fuses and we're going to be discussing those pretty quick but that's the cartridge fuse uh, and that's how they're put together